This is a simple spreadsheet, but it's the key to understanding your costs and in turn allows you to set your margins accurately. And margins is your oxygen. Your business needs it to survive and more importantly, it needs the right margins to thrive. So you wanna import a product and sell it online. You keep hearing the term landed cost and you're not quite sure what that even means. Well, this is your lucky day because in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a simple to understand spreadsheet that I just finished making and I made it just for you. I'll break it all down and explain each piece of the puzzle. Because if you don't know your numbers, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble, lose a lot of money and worst of all, feel like you don't have what it takes to start your e-commerce business. Sometimes you just don't know what you don't know, and that's all right. By the end of this video, you'll know how to calculate your landed costs, which in turn will help you calculate your gross profit margins. Sound good? First off, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications if you want more instructional videos like this. Before we dive into the spreadsheet, let me tell you a quick story that is super helpful and something that I want you to keep in mind as you work on your product cost analysis. Because one of the reasons you need to figure out your costs is to know how much you should sell your product for. Not too long ago, I was interviewed by Andrew Yoderin on the e-commerce fuel podcast. And Andrew was surprised at the margins the company I co-founded, Solo Stove, has been able to maintain. And on this topic, he asked the question, Where where do you see others waste a lot of money? Where can others cut fat so that they can have similar margins? And my answer to him is that it's less about cutting waste and more about sellers not asking for enough to begin with. And this is why what I'm about to walk you through is so important because if you don't know your costs, you'll have a hard time asking for the right price and you risk setting your margins too low. Yes, product differentiation and brand also play a role in whether your customers agree with your price, but I'll save that for another video. The short of it is that it all starts here. This is a simple spreadsheet, but it's the key to understanding your costs and in turn allows you to set your margins accurately. And margins is your oxygen. Your business needs it to survive and more importantly, it needs the right margins to thrive. So let's get right into it. Here we are uh, in the spreadsheet and I'm gonna walk you through this and it's a pretty simple spreadsheet, but I'll go cell by cell and show you what, what I've kind of built here for you. So the first part of it are, I've highlighted these cells in orange and these cells here are kind of the inputs. These are pieces of information that you need to plug in here. And so we start up here with the price of a container. Now I've built this sheet out based on a 40 foot container. And I know not everybody's gonna be shipping a 40 foot container, but for the, for the sake of uh, demonstration, we're just gonna pretend that you are gonna ship a 40 foot container. And even if you think about it, when you price this out, when you try to figure out your pricing, a lot of times you're thinking, okay, if the market takes to my product and they like it, I can eventually get to a 40 foot container. And so a lot of times you wanna see at that price, at that volume, where you kind of fall in, in terms of your pricing. So. Um, sometimes it's good to price out and knowing that if you do well, you do plan on hitting a 40 foot container and maybe before you get to that volume, you're selling it at a lower margin, but you know that if you hit that volume, you're going to get there. So you can play around with this, this input here. You can plug in a 20 foot container. You can plug in all sorts of different things in, um, in terms of your pricing here, but this is your shipping price for a container. So in today's crazy post COVID times, I just plugged in $15,000 just as an example. Uh, in this next line, customs clearance fees, these are quotes that you can get from your freight forwarder. So asking them what it's gonna charge, what they're gonna charge you for customs clearance, generally around a few hundred dollars or so. Duty rate is another input that needs to be discussed with your freight forwarder. And so I just plugged in here an example of 3.5%. If you're duty free, it's zero and it can go up from there. So asking your freight forwarder what the duty rate is, this is where you would plug it in as a percentage and that's a percentage of your, uh, your cost. Other fees, again, this is some somewhere uh, in a cell that I kind of put in there to kind of capture other fees that might be incurred from your freight forwarder. Again, getting a quote from them on your shipment is gonna kind of outline what other fees are involved. And so from there, after you get through a couple times, you can kind of figure out, oh, you need to add in a little bit of fat and sometimes 
uh, you can do that as a percentage. And so I just put half a percent. Again, this is half a percent based off of the price of the product to kind of cover the rest of the fees that are involved in a shipment. Again, that's the, the quote that your freight forward is gonna give you. So with all of those inputs, we then come down to working on our actual product. And lately I have had this skunk run through my backyard almost every night. And so when I thought about what product we should uh, use as an example, I put a skunk trap in there. So that's why we have skunk traps. We'll put the product name in here. In the next cell over, we have price per piece. So this is the price for one skunk trap. And I just put in $15. Again, you're gonna put in whatever dollar value uh, you're getting your product for. The next column here, we have pieces per carton. And this is pieces per master carton. When your product is shipped over, generally you'll have multiple units in one box. And that one box is what I'm referring to here. So I put eight skunk traps into one box and that's where I put in the quantity. So number eight. Coming to the D-cell, carton gross weight, Generally, when you're purchasing from Asia, we're talking in kilograms. In fact, anywhere in the world, mostly outside of the US, they use kilograms. So I put in the carton gross weight here at 15 kilograms. This is an input that you're gonna need, need to get from your supplier. So if I put eight pieces in a carton, what is it gonna weigh? A lot of times too, if you have a sample of a skunk trap and you weigh it, let's say for instance, if it weighs two pounds and you have eight of them, you kind of know, you can kind of do the easy math and say, okay, that's about 16 pounds. And then with a carton, maybe a big box weighs about three pounds. You can kind of add it up and guess, but it's best if you have the actual gross weight here from your supplier and to plug in there. Then we come to carton dimensions. And this is where you have the length times width times height of this master carton that we were just talking about. And in this, we're gonna use meters because in the next cell, you'll see that we're talking about carton cube and that's in meters as well. So we plug this in as meters. So this would be 80 centimeters, 60 centimeters, and uh, 60 centimeters or 0.8 of a meter, 0.6 of a meter, 0.6 of a meter. So if you get it in centimeters, just convert it over to meters, plug it in, and that's the last of that input. And what it spits out here from the next cells over, we have carton cube. So when we load out a container, we usually talk about it in cube and that's cubic meters. And so here in this cell, we've calculated cubic meters by multiplying these three cells, the length, the width, and the height, and we get a carton cube in meters. So that's 0.288 cube. And then from here, the next cell over, we're gonna talk about pieces per the 40 foot high cube container. And a 40 foot high cube, I think you can, I think the actual cube in a 40 foot high cube is about 75 or 76, if I'm right. And what I usually do is discount it by maybe 15%, because if you think about a container, a shipping container, you can't use up every single last space in there. There's gonna be some air where the boxes don't fit perfectly together, or you have some big boxes and some small boxes. And when you piece them all together, like a Tetris game, they don't all fit and, and you can't take up every last piece of space in that container. And so I factor in about 15% for air, essentially. And so I, when I calculate cube, I use 65 uh, cubic meters for a 40 foot high cube. And so if you look at the, the equation here, we have 65 divided by the carton cube right here. I'll put it back on here, 65 divided by H7, which is the carton cube, and then multiplied by C7, which is the pieces in the carton. And that tells us how many pieces, how many skunk traps we can get into a 40 foot high cube. And that tells us we can get 1,806 into a 40 foot high cube cart, uh, container. All right, so the next column here is our freight cost per piece, and this is gonna be an easy formula here where we take the cost of our 40 foot container and dividing it by how many pieces we can get in there. And so that there is gonna be B1 divided by I7. And that tells us that for every piece, the freight cost for each skunk trap is gonna be $8.31. Great, so let's move on to custom clearance fees. And again, we're taking the customs clearance fees that we allocated up here, maybe 300 bucks, maybe it's 500 bucks somewhere in the hundreds, but that comes down to 70, 17 cents a piece when you take that number, this 300 number, and you divide it by how many pieces we're getting into the container, and that takes us to 17 cents. 
duty, we do it the same way where we take the duty rate and um, we take that duty rate and, and multiply it by the cost of the unit. So $15 is the price of the skunk trap and we're putting a 3.5% duty rate. And so that comes out to 53 cents. And then the other fees per piece, that's this cell right here where we've kind of have a catch all after you work with your freight forwarder a number of times, or if you get a quote, you can kind of umbrella, take the remaining amount of fees. There's all sorts of weird fees from freight forwarders, but you can kind of group them together and figure out as a percentage, knowing that you can get 1,806 pieces of container, take the remaining amount of fees and kind of divvy it up uh, amongst all these pieces. And you can kind of come up with a other fees per piece. And this is kind of that flexible area. As you can see, it's not a huge cost. So don't stress about this one too much, but I put it in as half a percent just in case there's some other fees and that works out to eight cents a piece. And so our total cost per uh, scum trap is just a matter of adding these up. So you add up your other fees, your duty per piece, your customs clearance fees, your freight, and you come up with a total of $9.07. So we're just adding these up, adding these four cells up. And that means when we add in the actual price per piece, the $15 for each skunk trap added to our total costs, we get a landed cost per piece per skunk trap of $24.07. While our cost was $15, after we add in all the freight, we end up with $24. And in these next two columns, I've left it open to show what that means in terms of, of your gross margin. And here, I should have made this orange. I'll, I'll, I'll make that orange right here because this is an input as well. Sell price here is gonna be where you enter in what you wanna sell it for. And in this case, I put in $85 just to see what it would do. If I sold this skunk trap, I have an amazing skunk trap. It's got all sorts of features, you know, and, and, and I feel like I can sell it for $85. What does that mean in terms of gross margin? And that spits out 71.7%. .7 and you can see my formula here. You just take your eight, your sell price minus your landed cost. That gives you your profit and then divide it by the sell price again. And that gives you a gross margin that you can see here. And so you can play with this, right? So if you can, you can see, well, if I negotiated that down to $14 instead, what does that do to my gross margin? Or if I raise my sell price to 9999 what does that do to my gross margin? You can also look at container prices, right? If I got my container price down to $10,000 a container, what does that do, right? And you can kind of see how that changes our gross margin now we're at 80%. And you can kind of play with these things where you can see that a lot of, a lot of things actually don't matter that much. I mean, if you look at duty, where someone might think this is, you know, I have a 5% duty or maybe you even have a 10% duty, uh, really, at the end of the day, it doesn't change that much when your duty is, you know, a dollar forty, and you're selling it for a hundred dollars. You know, it doesn't it doesn't impact your your gross margins all that much. Now, every penny counts, and anywhere where you can save money is going to be a good place to save money. But you can kind of see that uh, there's there's you know a, just a number of inputs to play with, and you can kind of change things around, especially for larger items. The, the carton dimensions is something that you wanna um, pay attention to, right? The smaller you can make these cartons, the more you can get in a container. And when containers are $10,000, $15,000, that makes a difference. So playing with the carton dimensions, you can get more into, into a container and the freight per piece is gonna come down. Again, right now it's at $5.54, the way I just played with these numbers, but you can play with them and kind of see how things change. So really that's, that's a very simple spreadsheet, but it's enough to get you started and it's enough to help you understand what it means to get to a landed cost and all the inputs that are needed so that you can gather up that information, replicate this spreadsheet, and then start plugging in things and seeing what your landed cost will be. And more importantly, what your gross margin will be as you start to play with your sell price and adjust that as you start to decide what, what the right price is to sell. Now remember, this is just a start. You'll obviously need to build upon this foundation and cater the spreadsheet to your needs. So feel free to add whatever you need to your spreadsheet to make it work. And while I thought about just giving you a link to the spreadsheet I just made, that would be doing you a disservice 
service. When you build your own sheets, you understand them a hundred times better. And the beauty of YouTube is that you can go back to the beginning and watch this video as many times as you need to replicate my sheet. Now that you know how to calculate your landed costs, you need to know how to properly set your margins. Lucky for you, I made a video for this exact purpose. You don't want to set your margins wrong, so watch this video now. Remember to like and subscribe if you like these kinds of videos and want me to make more. Ask me anything down below and I'll do my best to answer every comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.